for the money, no it isn't for the fun, it's a plan, a scam, a diagram, for the benefit of everyone. Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KipAdger.com, here to bring you my loadout from the 2018 Tactical Games in Fayetteville, North Carolina. If you're unfamiliar with the Tactical Games, think CrossFit Games meets like two-gun competition. A bunch of physically demanding tasks, and then, when you're all nice and gassed out, being able to use those weapon systems. One being your primary, some sort of rifle, AR style, red dot, iron sights, nothing else, nothing magnified, and then a pistol. Clean, whatever sights on there, no red dots or anything like that on your pistol. Think about it kind of like a duty loadout, whether it's kind of military or law enforcement. Without having magnified optics, pretty vanilla stuff. Reason they do that is to keep the competition like pretty much the same across the board, kind of level it. And with that, here's all the gear I used in the competition. Starting with kind of the mundane from the ground up, ended up running these guys, the Limbs Boulder Boots, reviewed them before. Basically, kind of a minimalist boot. Don't know if Limbs appreciates doing gun tactical things in them. I think they're kind of a hippie company, but these have served me well. And even though there's not a ton of traction, didn't find it to be a liability at any point. Nice and light and yeah, did good for me. As far as pants, ended up wearing these guys. Kind of my first experience with these in any meaningful way. And these are the Tactical Distributors, uh, Tactical Distributors Neptune 2.0 pants. Essentially kind of this lightweight, quick drying material that has a little bit of stretch to it. Was that important? Absolutely. One, even in October, Fayetteville, it's hot and humid. And two, that bit of stretch. A lot of really dynamic stuff, whether it's rope climbs, at one point a bunch of deadlifts, uh, scaling walls, climbing over barriers, stuff like that. And yeah, they did a good job for me. And they weren't too hot or anything like that. As far as the top, just pretty much rolled with my sweet gangster moose shirt because all I wanted was a t-shirt. If I had something long sleeve, probably wouldn't have got my arm torn up climbing over concrete walls and stuff, but it was also pretty hot, so just rolled with this. As far as iPro goes, I wear prescription lenses and it was sunny out there, so wore these guys I've had for years, basically this pair of Oakleys. And the last day ended up with a bunch of cloud cover. Probably could have got away with wearing my Smith directors, but actually zeroed my rifle using these. And while it wouldn't probably make a big difference, different lenses can do different things with respect to your zero. So pretty much rolled these as the entire time. As far as ear pro, my Howard lights, especially with the, who was it? Valhall gear, gel ear cups, super comfortable. But any type of dynamic movement and stuff like that, didn't really want to be wearing those like rope climbs or say a really long run. So ended up going with the Surefire in-ear. I forget the model number for these guys. Basically the foam tip kind of fits into your ear, a couple different sizes, and these did a great job for me. As far as the belt setup, I wanted something that I could be able to run and not have to worry about it. Basically, I didn't want to have to try and adjust this thing, especially dynamic movements, any of that stuff. And I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to run the Snake Eater Tactical SET belt. And at the heart of it, three different components. One, this really lightweight inner belt, which holds your pants up, has female Velcro on the outside, and then basically the rest of the belt. So with that, there's a internal pad, kind of this mesh pad lined with male Velcro, female Velcro on the outside. And then over the top of that, we actually have this belt, which Again, cobra buckle and male-female Velcro corresponding. So all these things work synergistically to be able to stay in place. Once this thing was on, it was good to go. It, it didn't move at all for me. Climbing over walls, hopping barricades, running way further than I would like, did a good job. As far as the setup of my belt, needed basically pistol mags, rifle mags, as well as a holster. So kept it really clean. Didn't put a dump pouch on here, didn't put a med kit on there. Again, it's a race. If you wanna like train how you fight, 
load this thing up, more power to you. I kept it pretty clean. Ultimately, first experience with them, but ended up with these Snake Eater Tactical mag pouches, both the pistol pouches as well as the rifle pouches, and ultimately did a good job for me. Ended up running some P mags, which my buddy, Mr. Underwood, was kind enough to laser engrave with some awesome badger heads. But this setup did a good job for me holster wise. I didn't have a holster for the pistol I was running, and I wanted something I was familiar with that was still gonna give me retention. Last thing I wanted to do was have a pistol come out of my holster. Funny story, happened to someone, but ended up going with this guy, Safari Land. I'm familiar with the ALS as far as that locking system and did a good job for me in the games. As far as pistols, I ended up running this guy, full-size SIG P320. I've had basically for about two months and it did a good job for me. I know this thing shoots. Having said that, it didn't shoot as well as, I take that back, it shot as well as I was capable of shooting during the games, which isn't as good as I would have liked to have shot, but did a good job for me, didn't have any issues with it. Let's talk long guns and a little backstory. Originally I was gonna run this event with the SIG Tread Rifle, the one that I won in the SIG press event that I went to back in, end of August, I think it was. And I was talking to him, I was like, hey, listen, I'm gonna be running this event middle of October. I would love the opportunity to go shoot this rifle more, the one that I actually won your guys' event with. I know it performs. And they're like, yeah, cool, sounds good. And so I'm like, all right, but here's the thing. I don't want this thing like 11th hour. Like I want at least a couple weeks with it so that I can spend some time with it. Long story short, never made it. Like coming up to the day before I left, they're like, hey, we can probably send it next day, but it won't get to you in time. I'm like, yeah, no, it won't get to me in time. So right before I flew out there, like a week before the event, because I ended up going to the IV-88 shoot week prior or weekend prior. And so, yeah, scrounging around trying to find a rifle. Reached out, fortunately, the guys over at Radian, super helpful, and yeah, they sent me this out. Radian Model 1, never had any experience with it, but pretty pleased with it. There'll be a review following, if it's not already up when you're seeing this, but this thing treated me really well during the event. As far as other stuff on this rifle, I ran it with this guy, the ESD, Edgar Sherman Design Sling. Did a great job for me, especially the ability to very easily adjust this. So I think getting up to some sort of obstacle or maybe need to pick something up, being able to cinch this guy down, tight to my body, pick up whatever I needed, move something, things along those lines. And the other place this shined, even though I would have rather not had the experience, was on a very long run. Had this guy slung across, cinched it down, and started running. Eventually got there, and even though this is basically one inch webbing, it's about as comfortable as you're gonna get. Like, I had no issues whatsoever with it. Even carrying this rifle, which isn't like a minimalist light rifle, probably around like seven pounds slick, something like that, but Sling did a great job for me. Part of it was you had to have iron sights and it had to be some sort of red dot. So over at Scalar Work, uh, Scalar Works, Scalar Works, don't know how you pronounce it, but they were kind enough to loan me a set of their sights, these skeletonized backup irons, and these things did a great job. They were there and on top of that, this mount. So this mount is actually a lower one-thirds co-witness running it with this little guy, little Trijicon RMR. And having these at the lower thirds co-witness did a great job in that they're fixed, they're always there. And even if nothing else, they just kind of provided a really quick snapshot of picking up my dot in this RMR, getting into shooting positions to break shots. Lastly, with respect to this kind of setup, Magpul, Gen 2, PMAG, this one, and Magpod. It's kind of like a freebie. There were different places where you're going to be shooting from the prone, and I had this one magazine with a Magpod, and 
pretty much always made sure I had it so that if I did go into the prone, I could get a really fast, stable shooting position when I needed to. Of course, with respect to shooting, need some rounds and didn't want to be like loading out of boxes all the time. So brought these guys with me, dumped all my rounds into them. Worked great, reviewed them before, the MDOM ammo sacks. And yeah, easy to carry, nice big wide opening. They sit flat, reach in, grab a handful, jam max. As far as the ammo I was using, ended up using some really good ammunition, worked great for me, out of Minutemen Munitions, which is actually just north of Fayetteville, kind of north. I think it's up in Greensboro, North Carolina. Actually went by, I got to check out the shop and pick up my ammo before heading down to the games. I ended up wearing gloves while competing in the games as well. These guys right here, the PIG SKD Tactical Delta Utility Gloves, did a review on these before. They did a great job for me. Whenever I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to wear gloves for this, I usually end up cutting the hell out of my hands. So I'm like, I'm going to wear gloves for this, especially scaling like concrete walls, things along those lines. Last thing you want to do is tear up your hands and then turn around and have to do a delicate task, like pull the trigger. So. Where these didn't do that good a job for me is rope climbs. Got up the first time with them, and the second time I was like, you know what? I don't know if these are gonna help or hinder me. I stripped them off, and my second two rope climbs, I just barehanded. But everywhere else, these did a great job. Also with the tactical games, everything you run has to be with a plate carrier, to include running. And it needs to be right around 15 pounds. So. I was looking for something that one, was around 15 pounds, and two, wasn't gonna get caught up. I didn't really want a bunch of stuff across the front because I didn't really know what to expect and as minimal as I could keep it, that's what I was going for. And ended up running this guy right here, which is the Brig Plate Carrier by SKD Tactical. This did a great job for me. It, you can actually buy it with specific plates cut to it, level four standalone, and relatively heavy because it is level four standalone but this thing weighs right about 15 pounds it's actually like 14 and so we ended up throwing our stuff on the scale be like okay is everyone running about 15 pound plate carriers some people add some like i think like polyurethane plates it's like eight ten pounds or something but this came in about 14 pounds so on the back, there's actually some molly, and I ended up throwing just these Blue Force gear mag pouches on there. Threw one fully loaded mag pouch in there and brought this thing to 15, called it good. I will say inside here, these pads made a world of difference to include the shoulder pads, especially when it came to running with this guy. But it was slick and didn't get caught on anything, served me well. That is my loadout for 2018 Tactical Games out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Looking back, is there anything I would change? I don't think so. Ultimately, with this setup, big picture, I came in second in the Elite Division. Really stoked on that. Came in into it with zero expectations whatsoever, and the stuff performed. And I don't think there's like a piece of gear like, oh, if I had this, I would have came in first. Like, no. Dude that came in first to include the guy that almost got second, neck and neck, he came in third. Both like fire breathing meat eaters out of Fort Bragg, like right up the road. Great shooters, great athletes. There wasn't a piece of gear that was gonna like change that standing for me. Everything ultimately did a good job for me. So pleased with it. I would like to thank you guys though for helping and supporting me. Thank you guys very much. Whether it's just liking videos, sharing videos, or purchasing stuff through kitbadger.com forward slash shop, whether it's like targets, KBATs, access to the Badger Den, and also all my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys very much. It helps me, allows me to continue to create content. Very grateful for that. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Tradition, don't